shouldn't waste too much time today because I don't have that much. Um, we're gonna start with Superhuman by Dave Asprey, which I think is a pretty cool book about uh, apparently biohacking and really kind of aging backwards, as he claims. But yeah, I'm gonna read. Introduction. Who is this book for? Do you want to dramatically extend your lifespan, get more energy and power, brain power than ever, or even age backwards? This book is written with you in mind. About the author. Dave Asprey is a Silicon Valley investor, computer security expert, and entrepreneur who spent 15 years and $250,000 to hack his own biology. The Financial Times calls him a biohacker who takes self quantification to the extreme of self-experimentation. His writing has been published by the New York Times and Fortune and he is presented at Wharton Kellogg, the University of California and Singularity University. Less. Okay. <laughs> in the summary, despite being an experienced biohacker, Asprey's interventions in superhuman are simple and accessible to all of us. Healthy diet, quality sleep, harmful light avoidance, regular exercise and more. In this summary, we'll also explore little known but powerful hacks from ozone therapy to power chore alignment that can decelerate cellular aging and supercharge your body's ability to heal and rejuvenate, which is by the way, all something that I'm that I'm interested in, you know, optimizing my body as much as I can so that I'm feeling as best or as good as I can. Book summary introduction. What is the first thing you would do if you ever gain control of your own biology? Not die, probably. The author wants to take things further, aiming to age backward and finally heal like a deity. So he can keep getting better with age instead of suffering an inevitable decline. He wants to go from a mere mortal to a 180 year old superhuman. And there is a quote, someone with the wisdom of age, but who heals and regenerates like a teenager. Let's see how he plans to achieve that. Disclaimer, before you try any experiment or unlicensed medical approach suggest in the book, first consult with a doctor. Yes. Part 1. Don't die. The four killers. Aging is death by a thousand cuts, the author says. These are the four diseases most likely to leave the deepest cuts as you age. Heart disease. 23% risk dying from it. Diabetes. 25% risk dying from it. Alzheimer's, 10% risk dying from it, and cancer, 40% risk getting it, and 20% risk of dying from it, which is not cool and not great and not amazing. As you age, your mitochondria, responsible for producing lots of energy from the food you eat, become damaged and begin producing an excess of free radicals, which leak into the surrounding cells and lay the groundwork for the four killers. Stop damaging your own body with thousands of big or small cuts, focus on the basics. Good nutrition, quality sleep, and a healthy environment free of toxins that cause more cats. Take action now to stop this damage before it takes stacks up. I'm sorry. It's a lot easier to avoid damage to your my, mitochondria than it is to reverse it later. What if you made better choices throughout your life so you can take fewer hits over the course of decades? Uh, this is the premise of this book. And yes, something that I just see right now is quality sleep. No. I'm not fucking getting that. And this is a very, 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 very big problem. Also in building muscle and looking good and lean and shredded. Because I have seen in the times where I've actually really been able to sleep like eight hours a day and maybe even more, I have really tremendously had a or was in good shape. And yeah, just some thoughts and just some, um, just something that I want to point out. The seven pillars of aging. Pillar one, shrinking tissues. Loose skin, no muscle tone, shaky hands, foggy memory. That is what you think when you picture an old person, right? This is what happens when we age, when cells die and are not replaced. Brain-wise, this causes cognitive decline and dementia. To avoid a lot of unnecessary cell loss, keep your mitochondria healthy. Pillar 2. Mitochondrial mutations. Your mitochondrial DNA is a lot more susceptible to mutations than your human DNA because mitochondrial DNA has a limited ability to repair itself when it is damaged. Again, you're going to want to take fewer hits to your mitochondria. Pillar 3. Zombie cells. Some cells eventually no longer divide or function properly, yet they persist and secrete inflammatory proteins causing all the problems that stem from chronic inflammation. Over time, the accumulation of the damage they create is a major cause of aging and also disease. Pillar 4. Cellular straight jackets. The extracellular matrix holds your cells together and gives your tissues their elasticity. 
When these tissues lose their elasticity, they become stiff and your body has to work harder to push blood through your circulatory system. This can lead to aging, high blood pressure and heart disease, which is not amazing. Pillar 5. Extracellular junk. As you age, waste products build up both inside and outside your cells. They stick together and form plaques that cause aging and disease by getting in the way of healthy cellular interaction. Um, pillar 6. There's actually a lot of Pillar 7. Wow. It's amazing. Pillar 6. Chunk build up inside cells. Each cell's own built-in waste disposal system incinerates unwanted materials of all kinds. Keeping your cells free of junk and able to function optimally when the system malfunctions, the waste products end up just sitting there, clogging up the cell until it can no longer function, which is not a good thing. Pillar 7. Telomore shortening. Just like your shoelaces, there are end caps, end caps for your DNA to protect your chromosomes from fraying with wear and tear, aka age. These caps essentially deteriorate over time until they can no longer protect the cell. The simple interventions to avoid the four killers, good for you, no fried, grilled or shared meat. The right environment, moderate exercise, stress control, do you meditate and quality sleep are also the best and most effective ways of slowing down or reversing many of the seven pillars of aging. I do want to repeat, the simple interventions to avoid the four killers, good food, no fried, grilled or shared meat, very um, much exclamation marks, a lot of, sorry, <laughs> three exclamation marks, the right environment, moderate exercise, stress control, so do you meditate, and quality sleep. Food is an anti-aging drug. When it comes to aging, gra grains are bad, sugar is bad, shared or fried stuff is bad, and too much or too little protein is bad. Instead, opt for tons of organic vegetables, limited organic fruit and meat only from pastured animals. When you eat enough of the right fats without excess carbs or protein, your body leans to efficiently burn fat for fuel. If you eat excess carbs or protein, your body burns those first. I don't know about the protein part. I you know, always thought like, you know, proteins are like the overall most important thingy thing and whatnot, but... But yeah, ideally, get your protein from gently cooked grass-fed animals, wild fish or plants like hemp, period. <laughs> Limiting how much protein you eat or intermittent fasting are two of the most painless high-impact ways to live longer. I didn't know about that, but I'm actually not quite sure about that. I don't know, because there is a correlation between how long you live and the amount of muscle you have. For building muscle, you need protein. Like, you know, I've seen studies or I've heard something. I should definitely look that up. But yeah, it's actually not that of a long summary, unfortunately, because I would like to have more of that. Well, anyway, sleep or die. A lack of good sleep directly increases your risk of dying from one of the four killers, while good quality sleep promotes skin health and youthful appearance and healthy cell division. To improve your sleep, we get a sleep tracker. Did it take you a long time to fall asleep? Are you wasting your night with light sleep did you snore which is a sign of inflammation the more time you spend in either REM or deep sleep the more restorative your sleep will be you can increase your sleep quality by meditating taking a hot bath before sleep eating better consuming fewer toxins including alcohol reducing blue light exposure at night or taking the right supplements for your biology using lights to gain superpowers to harness the power of light, first reduce junk light at home by installing dimmers and wearing glasses that filter out blue light. To look better and have more energy, make sure you are exposed to some red or infrared lights every day or aim for 15 to 20 minutes of natural sun exposure a day. For the brave ones, consider trying an infrared sauna to aid in detoxification, boost your mitochondrial function. For help with wound healing, muscle fatigue or tissue repair, look into red and infrared light therapy and if your concerns are primarily skin deep, uh, yellow light therapy may be an easy fix. Part 2. Age backward. Turn your brain back on. It is pretty hard to concentrate or improve your decision making skills if your brain is constantly and easily panicked, even if the source of panic is a simple text message. An hour of neurofeedback can help you learn to self-regulate so your fight or flight response isn't activated quite so easily. Also, shining the invisible LED light down your brain for two minutes a day can dramatically improve your brain function, focus and mood. When it comes to food, start a diet that, consists, that consistently keeps your blood sugar low, 
avoid spikes and keeps ketones present in your body. By the way, this is something that I've seen like on my cheat days, which has been yesterday. Um, I always actually, you know, I actually always feel very, very, very bad. <laughs> <laughs> like tremendously bad, you know, I'm a normal diet, which is consisting of a lot of fruits, well, a lot of wedges, not that many fruits, um, quite a lot of protein at this point of time as well. Um, I really feel good, gut-wise, you know, I never feel too full, something that I just don't know, and all sorts of shit. There are also plenty of, well, I'm sorry, no, I'm not sorry, there's also plenty of pharmaceuticals and supplements that can help you enhance cognitive function as you age, such as Piracetam reduces cognitive decline with age. Uh, COQ10 Q10 helps your mitochondria produce energy. PQQ, a powerful antioxidant for anti-aging. And curcumin improves memory and attention while acting as an antioxidant. Metal bashing. Arsenic, cadmium, lead and mercury are the most toxic and present metals in our environment. Although the EPA has classified each of them as carcinogens. Today we are consuming them in considerable quantities. Toxic metals such as lead, thallium and mercury have a direct impact on mitochondrial cellular function leading to premature aging and also decline. It is essential to periodically see a functional medicine doctor, get your urine levels tested for heavy metals and then purge them from your or our system. Get an IV of glutathione. Or something. Talk to your doctor about activated charcoal treatment. Eat chlorella tablets along with fish, a common source of mercury. Consistently use the chest of fiber, 15 grams every other day for a year. Okay. Sweat it out in an infrared sauna or by exercising. Polluting your body with ozone. Ozone therapy can strengthen your immune system and your mitochondrial function. Weak cells that are vulnerable to invasion from bacteria or viruses are more sub susceptible to oxidation. Ozone therapy kills off these weak and damaged cells while it destroys harmful bacteria, yeast, viruses, fungi and protozoa. However, please don't try ozone gas before consulting a doctor. Accidentally inhaling it can cause permanent lung damage or even kill you, which is not cool. Fertility is longevity. Before getting any hormone replacement, get a lab test to learn your current hormone levels. The author has supplemented many of these hormones. Testosterone, necessary for muscles and sexual function. The HEA, a pre-hormone and oxytocin, best known for its role in making you feel good and bond with others. There are many simple ways to hack your hormones besides hormone replacement therapy. The good one is get good quality sleep consistently. Maybe I'm actually gonna try what is feel like the week, you know, just really trying this week to get a good amount of sleep, which means optimizing everything else for me. Eat the right foods. Stop eating sugar, soy. Why soy, motherfucker? Ma. <laughs> because tofu is fucking amazing. Excess omega C, six fats and refined carbs and replace these foods with additional healthy saturated fat from grass-fed meat, pastured eggs and energy fats. Go through your toiletries and personal care parts and get rid of everything containing pethalates and parabenes, which mimic hormones in the body and disrupt your natural hormone function. Exercise regularly and avoid chunk light and other environmental toxins. Your teeth are a window to the nervous system. When you bite, when your bite is misaligned, your jaw is always on guard, trying to keep you from banging your teeth into one another. This causes the trigger a manual nerve to send a threat message to your autonomic nervous system, trigger, triggering a fight or flight response and releasing cortisol, the stress hormone which is highly inflammatory and has its own profound aging effects, which is fucked up. A correct bite through something as simple as a plastic bite guard can allow your lower jaw to relax, making a big difference in your nervous system. In other words, proper jaw alignment can help your entire body feel better and become younger. Um, blah, 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 blah. Humans are walking the petri dishes. Uh, there are approximately 39 trillion bacterial cells in the human body. If our balance of microorganisms is off, especially in our gut, we age rapidly, develop disease and die. That's amazing. The trick is to focus on eating the foods that help good bacteria grow and reproduce or reproduce, which is 
prebiotic fiber and resistant starch. You can get prebiotics from vegetables that are rich in soluble fibers like sweet potatoes, Brussels sprouts, and asparagus. There is a little probiotic fiber in coffee and chocolate too. The more I know. The best way for anyone to starve the bad bacteria and feed the good one is by cleaning up your diet. So don't eat grains, legumes, or nitrate vegetables, all of which lay the groundwork for leaky gut syndrome. Ah, why legumes? The thing is, it is such a fucked up thing because, you know, it's, it's all of these things that I, you know, I don't eat sugar, which is the next point. Quit sugar or quite quit. Bad bacteria love sugar and feed off it. I eat a lot of legumes just because I don't eat dairy and I don't always want to eat meat quite, you know, and I need protein. I don't know. Uh, never eat industrially raised animals again because the antibiotics... Uh, they receive in the glyphosate in their food will end up in your gut and harm your gut bacteria. Part 3. Heal like a deity. Finally, although many of the techniques the author mentions in the last part of the book are unregulated and often untested by him, here is a few ways to pr practically and realistically heal like a deity. Spend more time in nature to boost your own natural killer cells and enhance your immune system. Bonus points for frequently visiting a forest with lots of evergreen trees. Get your hormone levels checked and look at any prescription meds that may be causing a problem. To improve sexual function, simply practice Kegel exercises on a daily basis. For your skin to look younger than ever, a supplement with grass-fed or pastured college protein, at least 10 grams per day. You can also make Bone broth if you don't like collage protein. Eat more foods containing polyphenols and antioxidants, which is vegetables, coffee, tea, and chocolate. For your hair to look shinier than ever, stop using chemical-laden personal care products and switch, uh, switch to all natural versions. Throw out anything containing phthalates, parabens, and basophenols. For women, consider alternatives to hormonal birth control. Uh, deal with your stress already to stimulate blood flow to the scalp, get a head massage or purchase an at-home massager. Key takeaways. As a general rule, always aim for good nutrition, quality sleep and a healthy environment free of toxins. Quit eating grains and sugar and never eat industrially laced animal again. But I'm not so sure about grains. Like I, I, I do like grains, but... But yeah, I, I actually don't eat them that often, you know, the only thing that I'm eating is oats on quite a daily basis. The health and diversity of your gut bacteria is the most important part of your system. And before trying any advanced biohacking technique or drug, always consult with a doctor. Action steps. Clean up your diet for your gut bacteria to thrive. Invest in a sleep tracker and improve your quality of sleep. Listen to the author's podcast for advanced biohacking techniques. Um, bulletproof radio. I know the bulletproof things. Have I actually gone through this book already? I don't know. Further reading. Meta Human by Deepak Chopra. New York Times bestselling author Deepak or Chopra unlocks the secret to moving beyond our present limitations to access a field of infinite possibilities. Lifespan by David A. Sinclair. In this groundbreaking, groundbreaking book, Dr. David Sinclair, leading world authority on genetics and longevity, reveals a bold new theory for why we age. And last one, for small creatures such as we, such as we by Sasha Sagan, part memoir, part guidebook and part social history. This is a luminous exploration of Earth's, Earth's marvelous that require no faith in order to be relieved. But I do want to quickly, Dave Asprey. I do wonder what Dave Asprey's physique is looking like. Ah, yeah, it's this dude, I know. Um, I do want to actually... Uh, can I find something like that? Well, I mean... Is this the same dude? I don't know. I mean, he, he, he looks quite good, I guess. Yeah, he looks quite good. Fat burning man, able James and bulletproof. Well done. Like, but I have heard about the Mike... This is also him? Ted Naim. No. It's not him. I've also heard of the mitochondrial thingy thing. Um, well, there's actually also another book, The Bulletproof Diet. This is, I think, what I've gone through, which is also by him. Yes, it's also by him. Um, 
and also some other books apparently. Uh, how a bulletproof founder Dave Asprey and whatnot. But he's also fairly old, so this is something that I also have to take into account. How to get a bulletproof body? There's actually a. I don't know what I want to say, by the way. Body hacking gym. So he's also going to the gym. Hmm, what about calisthenics, motherfucker? Bulletproof diet, how to get a bulletproof body. There is some picture, and this picture is... How much time have you spent being too tired, even though you worked out or struggled to find a way to lose fat? If you're like most people, the answer is too much. Being healthy is just an important for entrepreneurs, college students, blah, 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 blah. Eat a bulletproof diet for the bulletproof body. Eat lots. Long-term calorie restriction is not an effective weight loss method, and it has disastrous effects on your health and your brain. When I was 300 pounds, I ate... 1,000 to 1,800 calories a day and worked out 9 hours a week. I didn't lose a pound of anything I was gaining. Here's why. Actually, very interesting. Fucking interesting. Calorie cutting. Restricting calories is a stressor. When your body is stressed and believes it is starving, it wants to hold on to fat. By eating more of the right foods, you tell your body it's okay to burn fat. Nutrition deficiencies. Nutrition-dense foods are often sacrificed when people restrict calories. Things like grass-fed butter... Yeah, he's the guy that actually puts butter into his fucking coffee. Uh, fatty pasture-raised meat and organs have highest nutrient content of any food. They're also high in calories, which is why misinformed, calorie-fearing people avoid them. Without proper nutrition, your body won't effectively burn fat or build muscle. Eat nutrient-dense foods like those on the Bulletproof Diet and ignore the calories. It's food quality and composition that matters and not the volume. You know, I've actually heard uh, very recently that the whole calories in, calories out is actually not that of a huge thing. So, yeah. Low-calorie junk food. In order to cut calories, many people resort to things, I'm not going to call them food, like 100-calorie snack pads, diet soda, and fat-free yogurt. Big mistake, these foods might be lowering calories, but they make you crave more food. They don't satisfy your appetite or provide nutrition. They contain toxins that will and blah, 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 blah. Maintain high, healthy, saturated fat intake. Uh, to burn fat instead of sugar, it also keeps you satisfied with prevents cravings. Make sure you're eating high-quality fats, not vegetable oils or peanut butter. Saturated fat like coconut oil and grass-fed butter will not cause hardened arteries. They help your brain and body perform and look better. Fats are needed for the foundation of sex hormones like testosterone and human growth hormone. A high-fat diet prevents blood sugar swings and low energy. When in doubt, eat more fat. I eat 60% of my calories from fat and often have a meal that is only fat, which keeps my metabolism running. And maybe this is something that I'm going to try out this week. That I'm going to eat more fat and, yeah, I'm just going to eat more fat. Because, you know, I've been restricting myself just because I... Calories. Just because calories. But, yeah. Avoid toxins. Yes. Sleep. Sleep is one of the most important aspects of maintaining a bulletproof body. Without proper sleep, your body won't repair muscle tissue, burn fat, or recover for the next day. Poor sleep is hungry, distracted, weak, sick, and fat. Through various techniques, I've been able to hack my sleep to the bare minimum. This is after wrecking my adrenals by doing it wrong. One of the reasons I can sleep so little is because I'm healthy. If you're currently obese or struggling with body fat issues, you can't afford to limit sleep. Don't try to sleep 5 hours a night and lose 100 pounds at the same time. It won't work. And don't try to start a weight training program while cutting sleep. If you're exercising, you need to sleep much more than a sanitary individual. Muscle tissue doesn't repair unless you get adequate delta deep sleep. Aside from a, uh, my 2 year long no exercise experiment, one of the reasons I don't exercise regularly is that I would have to sleep a lot more. A 20 minute workout can increase your sleep needs by over 3 hours, but I, I'm still gonna work out just also because I like it. Sleep as long as you need if you're exercising more than 2 times per week. If you want to hack your sleep, do it right. Read our articles on sleep hacking, this is not an area where you can afford to be reckless. Sleep deprivation can cause several adrenaline, fatigue, blah 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 blah, but having an extra 4 hours a day is priceless. Yes. Body exercise guides. There's a number of advantages. Exercise improves bone density, blood, blah, blah, blah. Correct hormone balance, burn fat and gain muscle. There's the point of diminished return with exercise. More exercise will not always lead to more benefits. Most people over-exercise. Exercise should generally be no more than 20 minutes and they should be very high intensity. Bulletproof exercise. This isn't an encompassing fitness manual. It gives you basic 
framework, which you can use to stay fit in the least possible amount of time, far less than even the 4-Hour Body Tim Ferriss Most Awesome Guide, which you should own for sure if you have enough interest to read blah 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 blah. Part 1 Exercise. Uh, there are 5 keys to bulletproof exercise, make it breathe, intense, infrequent, safe and purposeful. You perform only one set of each movement per workout. Yes, it is quite very... Cardio is not necessary necessary for improving cardiovascular function. In most cases, it is detrimental to health and practicing for the wrong reasons. To burn calories. It is impossible to isolate one aspect of fitness. Blah, 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 blah. I'm still... Why, yeah. why weight training is the best form of exercise? Uh, the five biggest moves. Actually, very interesting thing. Activity move. Supplement smart. But I want to just know the sleep hacks because I want to sleep less. <laughs> Stomach it made sound, but I just don't want to sleep as much as I. Page not found. Suck my dick, motherfucker. This is what I have to say. Like, um, I mean, there's just various different. How to improve your brain with nicotine and not smoking. How and why you should get your mitochondria tested. What if I just search for sleep? I might have actually been already going through this, but I don't know. Bonus Redux, seven types of rest that will fix what sleep doesn't. Let teens sleep in already how early school start time. Sleep is the boss of you by Matthew Walker. Actually, very great book, Why We Sleep. Hack your brainwaves for learning, sleep, focus and more. I do want to see what this is about, but I think that it is some sort of a podcast and so there's not going to be a transcript, I guess. Keynotes. Um, Dave Asprey. Dave Asprey. Sleep hacking. It's actually a very long episode. I actually wasn't intending to do that. How to call your mitochondrial clocks, Dave. Uh, nine ways to hack your sleep to sleep better. Wake up happy out of hack sleep deprivation. Stay energized. Uh, thought of biohacking, um, let's actually just choose something. Prime with protein. A lot of protein power and even more stores of animal protein take a lot of work to digest and kind of leave. Too much protein can also raise an alertness chemical in the brain called orexin, which can disrupt your sleep. Turn down the light, fill up with fat at dinner, sleep better with the sleep cycle app. Yeah, sleep cycles, apparently also a thing. Maybe I'm actually... Also gonna try that out. How to sleep better. Science-backed sleep hacks to wake up better, I guess. Or happier. Um, but those sleeping blah blah blah. Research shows it's not the number of hours of sleep you get that matters most. It's the quality of the hours you are getting. High quality restorative sleep carries a number of benefits. It improves brain function, aids in muscle recovery, boosts longevity, blah 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 blah. How much sleep do we need? Uh, seven science backed sleeps to improve your sleep. Protect yourself from chunk light. Yes. Meditate every day. Yes. Try a high tech sleep device. No. Figure out your sleep chronotype. Ah, it's. You know, apparently I am supposed to be a bear. Most people fall into this category of bears. Circadian rhythm falls to sun and stay asleep easily. If you're a bear, recharge during the mid afternoon when bears feel an energy dip. Oh no, I, I'm not that, I guess. How you sleep matters. Fill your plate with the right fats. Maybe I'm also gonna try that out to eat a lot of fats before on my evening. Take these supplements. And yeah, that's quite it. Um, I don't know, just figure out your sleep cycle. This is something that I can tell you. But yeah, anyway, I'm gonna end this episode there. So I wish you the best health and happiness and more success. And also hope that you're gonna remind yourself and you're gonna be remembered. Respectfully means your legacy basically means just being a nice person. That being remembered as a nice person, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Yeah, that's my view. Are why are you here? What are you trying to change? And what is bothering you the most? These three questions. I hope they're gonna show you your purpose and maybe even a business city, which is a pretty fucking cool thing. Um, one last question is: What could you essentially say to another person that is indeed gonna change their life? Because I totally believe that we all can say something, which is an amazing thing. And so please think about it. And yeah, I'm gonna see you the next time. Bye bye. Please take care. Really.